Consider the following proposed solution for the critical section problem. There are n processes p0 to pn minus 1. In the code, the function p max returns an integer not smaller than any of its arguments. For all, t of i is initialized to 0. We need to check whether this proposed solution ensures mutual exclusion but there is deadlock ensures mutual exclusion and there is no chance for deadlock. There is no mutual exclusion and there is deadlock. There is no mutual exclusion and there is no chance for deadlock. We can see this algorithm is similar to the Lambert's Bakery algorithm. It is an n-process solution to the critical section problem. This is used to synchronize n number of processes where only one process is allowed to enter the critical section at a time. For that, each process should be associated with a token variable which is initialized to zero. If a process wishes to enter the critical section, that process should reset its token variable, mean the process should choose a token number. Before choosing the token number, the C variable or a choosing variable is set to 1, showing that the process is now choosing the token. And once the token is selected, the C variable is reset to 0. Now suppose P0 wishes to enter the critical section, C value is set to 1. Now how the token is calculated? The maximum of all the current tokens plus 1. Maximum of all current tokens is now 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So P0 got the token number as 1. Having got the token, it will reset the C variable as 0. Once P0 got its token, suppose the processor got preempted and P1 got the processor. P1 also wishes to enter the critical section. C value is set to 1. Now the token value is calculated. The maximum of all current tokens plus 1. The maximum of all current tokens is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. But since this function is not atomic, in between, before this value is assigned to the token variable or before the C value is reset, suppose the processor got preempted and P2 got the processor. Now P2 also wishes to enter the critical section. It will set the C variable. Now the token value is calculated and the max function now returns the same value. Now the maximum of all current tokens is still 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So since this function is not atomic, while one process is in the midst of execution of this process of execution of choosing the token number, in between if the processor get preempted and if some other process execute, there is chance that more than one process can have the same token number. Now P2 got the same token number. 2. After choosing the token number, C value is reset. Assume that there is one more process who doesn't wish to enter the critical section, so the token variable is still 0. So at a time, there can be some processes who doesn't wish to enter the critical section. For them, the token variable will be 0. There can be processes who are now choosing the token number, who is in the midst of choosing the token. For them, the C value will be set to 1. There can be processes who wishes to enter critical section or who are inside the critical section and have their token number ready. For them, the C value will be 0 and the token value will be not equal to 0. And if we consider any process with its token number, the other token numbers can either be greater than it or less than it or even can be same as it. And always a process with the lowest token number should be executed first for this algorithm.
So now let P0 got the processor. P0 is trying to enter the critical section. For that, it checks for every other process. Is there whether that process is now choosing the token number, whether the C value is set to 1. It means the process is not ready with the token. Let all the processes be ready with their token number. Then we can compare the token numbers and make the decision. So here P1 is in the midst of choosing the token number. So P0 will never enter the critical section. It will wait there. After some time, when P1 get the processor, it will complete the execution and the token variable value is set to 2 and C value is reset to 0. So now we have two processes with the same token number. Now before checking the condition, suppose P2 got the processor. Now P2 checks for every other process. First of all, whether that process is now choosing the token. No, there is no process who is now choosing the token. Then whether there is any token number which is not equal to 0. There are two token numbers which are not equal to 0, which means there are two processes which are wishing to enter critical section or which are inside the critical section. Then instead of this condition, suppose the condition be this t of j is less than t of i mean whether that token number is lower than this token number. Yes, there is one token number which is lower than this token number. It means that lower token number should be served first. So this process will not enter the critical section. It will wait. Now P3, suppose P3 got the processor, P3 is not executing the critical section. Again let P0 got the processor. P0 checks. Now C, uh, no process is now choosing the token number. It checks the next condition, whether there is any token which is not equal to 0. There are two tokens which is not equal to 0. And whether that token numbers are less than this token number, no. Now P0 can enter the critical section. So a process with the lowest token number entered the critical section first. Now while this process is inside the critical section, suppose P1 got the processor again. Even if P1 tries to enter the critical section, it will check the condition whether there is any token which is lower than this token number. Yes, this token number is lower than this. So P1 will never try to enter the critical section. But what happens with the processes with the same token number? Let after some time P0 completed the execution of critical section. Then the token variable is reset to 0. Now P1 got the processor again. P1 checks whether there is any token which is not equal to 0. Yes, whether that token number is less than this token number. No, it is not less than this token number. So P1 will enter inside the critical section. While P1 is inside the critical section, let P2 got the processor. P2 check whether there is any token which is not equal to 0. Yes, there is one token. And whether it is less than this token number. No, it is not less than this token number. So P2 will also enter inside the critical section. Thus, mutual exclusion is violated. There are more than one process inside the critical section at the same time. So with this condition, mutual exclusion will be violated. To solve that problem in the original Lambert Bakery algorithm, the process ID is compared. And here in this algorithm, instead of this condition, suppose the condition is T of J is less than or equal to T of I. What happens if there is some process? With same token value, then also this process will not enter the critical section. For example, P1 checks whether there is any token which is not equal to 0. Yes, there is one token which is not equal to 0. Whether that token number is less than or equal to this token number. Yes, it is equal to this token number. So P1 will not enter the critical section. It means if there are more than one processes with same token number, there is no chance that they are inside the critical section at the same time because this condition fails.
it means with this condition by adding this equal to condition the mutual exclusion condition is satisfied but will the algorithm work fine consider here p1 is checking for P2's, p2's token variable here the p2 value is equal to the p1's token value so p1 is waiting for p2 in the while loop after some time let p2 got the processor p2 check whether there is any token which is not equal to zero yes whether that token value is less than this value no whether it is equal to this value yes so p2 will also wait for p1 it means both the processes are waiting for each other without entering the critical section. So there is chance for deadlock. So this proposed solution ensures mutual exclusion but there is deadlock.